I just, just curious uh, what your conversations were with, with PG. How's he doing uh, mentally? I mean, he's a little disappointed, um, as expected. But you know, I think you know we got the best case scenario as far as you know what we thought it could be, and so you know being re reevaluated in three weeks, two or three weeks, um, is something that we're looking forward to. And so. Um, you know, his spirits are down, but, you know, that's to be expected when it's late in the season and uh, when you want to help your team. So, but we're going to support him 100%. And then um, when, when you look at uh, this team, this team has played uh, long stretches without Kawhi. Uh, this, this probably is one of, the, one of the first, you know, stretches that you know PG's going to be out for a while, you know, just Kawhi and, you know, some of the other guys. Just, how, how, how do you feel like, how ready do you guys feel like you are for this kind of challenge? Oh, we're ready. You know, we did it last year as well. I think he only played 32 games last year. And so, um, you know, next man up mentality, I know you hear it all the time, but we're definitely ready, you know, for the challenge. And we have a lot of good players in this locker room. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited for the challenge. Ty, speaking of next man up, outside of Kawhi, is there a player or players that you anticipate having a significant opportunity to step up in PG's absence? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it's going to be done by committee. I don't think of one person can kind of fill the shoes of PG, but I do think we've got some good pieces that can, can uh, make up for some defensive things, off, offensive things with EG and, you know, Bones and, and then when Norm comes back. So um, we have guys that can make up, you know, one player. You know, it's going to be tough to, you know, make, make one player take PG spot. But like I said, we got a lot of good guys in this locker room and um, it's going to get an opportunity and they're excited about it. Eric, it moves in the starting lineup tonight? Yes, sir. Is that something that, because there's only so many games left, you have to, you feel like you want to commit to for the rest of your season? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. As it pertains to Eric, um, would you like to see him be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end? It does seem like he's turned down a couple shots he wouldn't normally take. Yeah, I think uh, just being more aggressive, you know, I think running more pick and rolls, and then my job is to make sure that we can, we can keep him aggressive, you know, call his plays and call his sets. Um, so he definitely has to be aggressive, but you know our team. I thought last game we passed up a lot of open shots that we should have taken. You know, even though you're not making shots, you got to take the right shots. And um, I thought we passed up some shots that we should have we, we would have normally taken. So we got to be better with that. But Ty, good to see you. Um, across the league, it seems like there's been a good number of <laughs> incidents of players being frustrated with calls. And I was wondering, have you seen that just being? Part of the normal course of competition, or does it seem like it's more than in recent years? What's recent years? When I right, played? It, it, no, no, like <laughs> this past this past year <laughs> or two years. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, officiating is hard. It's yeah. tough, and I mean, everything's spurred the moment, you know. So they're gonna miss some calls. Like, you know, we're gonna turn the basketball over. You're gonna miss shots. You know, it's just it's part of the game. It's not like they're doing it intentionally. So um, it's a tough job, and so. You know, just got to play through the officiating. You know, it's like we got to play through when guys turn the basketball over. If you miss shots, you got to play through it. Yeah. It's the same thing. Do you think there are things that can be done to improve the dynamic between the players and the officials? I don't know. Yeah. I don't even want to say it. Fair <laughs> 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 enough. We've had, um, just close that game, Wins ball without Zoom, without, without Mark Mason. I, I know that lineups have been the way they've been this season. Um, what do you feel like that unit can do better um, offensively just to you know, be more efficient in that? And that's what we need you do choose to go like that. Play with more pace, more pace in the half court, get into our spots, not walk around, um, attack the basket, attack the rim, don't just set up the jump shots. And um, I think we have offense out a lot. And so just got to play with more pace and more force and more physicality as far as taking screens on the door, not letting you run through every play. Um, so bringing the physicality there. And then running on stuff with pace and with speed. You, know, you can't walk around and expect to get something done. And Ty, kind of touching on that, uh, you said after the game on Tuesday, uh, you said after the game on Tuesday that the flow was nasty. Guys weren't sharing the ball, that whole thing. Now with PG out, um, you kind of look like, uh, feel like maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Guys aren't going to sit around. No, not that way, but maybe they're not going to maybe they're not going to sit around and watch him and Kawhi just play one on one. Maybe they're going to well, move without the ball. One on one players, we're not a movement team. We're the oldest team in the league playing. So we're not, if you look at our team, guys are not movers. You know? So we got to have great spacing. We got to attack the right way. We got to attack mismatches and make the right play, like we are accustomed to doing. And so um, you know, we're not second in the league since January 1st um, in offense because you know, we play, we got to play a certain style of basketball every night. Mm -hmm. And we understand that getting to the paint is number one, getting to the rim. 
And two, it's making the right play once you get there. Right. And three, is getting the mismatch you want, make teams double team, and make the right play. And so, um, if we're not going to do that, it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough almost every single night. And so, we got to play with the pace, which Russ brings in the transition. But now we got to play with better pace in the half court as well if we want to be successful. Hi, Ty. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You all right? Yeah. You in there? You were sick the other day. You better? Huh? Are you feeling better? I feel great. <laughs> I feel how I look. <laughs> Smile. I love it. Right? Um, okay, so I, I want to ask about Kawhi, and obviously, like for all he does for you guys, um, in this situation without Paul in the lineup, um, is there something that you guys need him to do in his Kawhi way to sort of rally the troops or rally the charge or kind of get you guys to you know play with pace or whatever it is that you need? Yeah, I mean, we need him to be um, in attack mode all night. You know, can't ease into the game. Um, and then, you know, making the right place for other guys to get shots as well. But now he's going to have a lot more um, pressure to guard the better players because PG took that responsibility of guarding the best player, um, you know, to start the game. And so Kawhi had to do it a little earlier along with scoring the basketball as well, you know. So that's one of the biggest things. But like I said, we're, um, we've been used to playing one of those guys out, you know, so we kind of know how to play. It's just a little different because now we got bled. I mean, we got um, – <laughs> Russ, um, Plumlee, and now E. Gordon, you know, and so um, for those guys to try to fit in, try to understand how we want to play, it might be the, the most famous, it's going to be the most difficult, but it'll be fine. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>